all right so the next chapter today that we will be discussing is management responsibility and performance reporting yeah yeah that i will be providing you answers after the break okay now the next chapter which says management responsibility and performance reporting so basically it's a small chapter we will be discussing two major areas in this chapter and that is responsibility centers which will be linking to responsibility accounting and performance measurement so if i ask you what basically is responsibility center or a responsibility accounting can anyone tell me if we talk in the context of a business for what thing for which particular item or for which particular thing would you held a manager accountable for um, held a manager responsible can anyone tell me yes sir so it's in the i can say division level the business unit okay you can say that a particular business unit absolutely fine answer anyone else who would like to contribute to it yeah to make sure that the the, the, the rules fulfilled okay and the, the, the plan of the, the right. business fulfilled as what they want to achieve yeah. all right we can say that as well so when we talk about the accountability when we talk about responsibility the managers will be responsible for the source resources that they have been allotted for the resources that they have been given by the company so we can have few questions so let's say if it is a responsibility accounting responsibility accounting means that you def, uh, you identify the manager responsible for one particular area of the company and you held them accountable you held them responsible for the resources that have been given to them well, let's say they can be held res responsible for the revenues they can be held responsible for cost or whatever thing that they are responsible so when a manager is held accountable for that particular area for which he is responsible that is called responsibility accounting and the area which is coming under that manager so let's say there are four divisions a b and c in an organization and there are four managers so manager a would be held responsible for the area a manager b would be held responsible for area b manager c would be held responsible for area c so the point over here is that you are held accountable for your particular area for your particular division of the organization and that process is known as responsibility accounting now what is a responsibility center as we were discussing so responsibility accounting segregates revenue and cost into area of personal responsibility in order to monitor and assess performance so the main purpose of having a responsibility accounting is that you want to assess the performance of any particular manager that okay now you segregate the revenue revenue from department a b c d cost of department a b c and d and then you identify that which manager is performing well compared to the other ones right so that process is known as responsibility accounting now when you talk about responsibility accounting few questions pop up in your mind what are the resources that have been provided to the manager question number 1 obviously you will hold someone accountable if you are giving some resource to them now let's say now let's say your parents have sent you over here in order to study 
so they have given you resources they have given you the financial part they have given you let's say a vehicle to travel from your home to here so they have given you resources now you attempt an exam you get a result you go back to your home you show your result to your parent now your parents will be assessing your performance based on that result that they will be telling you that okay we have given you the resources that you required now are you giving us the required result so the first question that comes to the mind in context of a business what are the resources of a manager that can be finance that can be human resource that can be marketing expertise anything that can be raw material that can be labor that can be any other resource given to the manager the second thing that comes to mind is how is the performance of the manager or which links to the third one which says that are they using the resources effectively so definitely if you will use the resource effectively then only your performance will be good but if you are not using the resources effectively so your performance will go down everyone is clear that what basically responsibility accounting is that you divide your organization into different areas segregate the word segregates over here means to distribute to divide so let's say uh, we look we looked at the control over transaction in chapter number 1 which says segregation of duties so word segregation means to distribute to divide right so here what we are dividing we are dividing the different areas of the organization we divide different area of organization and we say okay we divided it this is your area this is your area this is your area now you have to perform in your a with boundaries you have to perform in your boundaries and you have to perform in your own boundaries and then we will be assessing have you performed well has he performed well or has he performed well so we divide the organization into different areas so that we can assess the performance of each of the manager working in the organization now responsibility center so the division the division in which you are dividing your organization or for which you can say a manager is responsible a area of responsibility for a manager will be known as a responsibility center so a responsibility center is a function or a department of an organization that is headed by a manager who has direct responsibility for its performance so the manager would be held responsible directly for the performance of his area now let's say continuing the same example if you have a certain result in your exam and your father is not happy with that so who will he hold accountable for that obviously you because he was having good hopes from you and god forbid you did not perform well so your father will say why have you not performed well i provided you the resources i provided you the luxuries i provided you everything you need in order to study even now if you are not providing me the result so he will be holding you accountable right so same as the case over here that if the area of that if that particular area of the organization will not perform well the manager will be held accountable why your area is not performing well despite of the provision of all the resources is everyone clear what we are talking about now right so we have three major responsibility centers cost center profit center investment center okay three major areas of responsibility we have in any organization you can apply these three terms in any organization of the world i can bet you on that now how how can we apply each one of them the first one is cost center as the name suggest manager of the cost center will only be responsible for 
cost. Any example you guys can give me of any function or a department of in an organization which can be considered as a cost center? Accounts department. Okay. So, payroll department. Payroll department, definitely. So the point over here is that accounts department or payroll department. Are they selling anything? Production department. Are they selling anything? No. They are not selling anything. Right? They are only incurring cost they are only incurring cost so when you are maintaining the accounts of an organization they, are you selling those accounts obviously not when you are maintaining a payroll system are you selling the pay slips of your uh, employees obviously not so all you are doing you are maintaining your internal records in which some cost is being incurred so those department, those center in an organization will be classified as cost center. Is everyone clear with that? Now, profit center. How do we calculate profit? What's the formula to calculate? Normal formula. I'm not going into any detail. Normal. Common sense. Sales minus cost. You make some sales, you incur some cost, you net them off, you get a profit. My sales is 100, my cost is 80, so my profit is 20. Simple. So, the manager of a profit center, the manager of a profit center will be responsible for revenue as well as for cost. He will be responsible for both the things. He will be responsible for both the things, the cost as well as the revenue. Example we can have, sales department, a sales team. So they are incurring cost, let's say salary of the salesperson and they are getting revenue as well by selling the things, isn't it? The third one is the investment center, investment, what will you invest? What a company will invest? Money. money, definitely, which will be the profit, the profit of the company. So they will be responsible for the manager of the investment center will be responsible for cost, revenue, which turns into profit. And after profit, they will be responsible for capital investment as well. Now, if I talk to you about an investment center, we can have an example of a treasury department of an organization whose work is to invest and make money from investment. So these are the three major centers in an organization that you have to look for. So these are the definitions of each one of them. Cost center, managers are accountable for the expenses that are under their control. Expenses means cost. They will be only responsible for cost. Then we have a profit center. Profit center, divisional managers have the responsibility for both cost and revenue. Both the things. Because ultimately the manager is responsible for how many things? Three things. Three things. Cost, revenue, which turns into profit. Profit. So cost, revenue, profit. Whereas the second line says decision on investment are taken at the head office level. So which goes at the investment center, investment center, divisional manager have the responsibility for investments as well as cost and revenue. So the manager of cost center will be responsible for only one thing that is cost. The manager of profit center will be responsible for three things, cost, cost revenue and profit. Whereas the manager of investment center will be responsible for four things cost revenue that makes a profit and then profit is further invested is everyone clear with that okay now this is what we have discussed this is a cost center this is a profit center this is a revenue uh, revenue center and investment center okay now the point over here is 
we identified okay what is responsibility accounting how to hold a manager responsible how to hold a manager accountable but the major point to be discussed is how to measure their performance now let's say if it is a cost center how will i measure the performance of the manager of the cost center so there comes performance measurement there comes performance measurement which tells you to identify the performance of any of the particular manager working in the division of any of the organization so this is what we will be discussing next performance measures when we talk about performance measures most of the measures are in terms of ratios because ratio analysis is the best technique to be used in order to assess the performance of either a company as a whole or a particular single person so ratio analysis is the best technique to analyze the performance of any of the company or any of the company or any of the person working in a company <coughs> as a whole so the first thing the first measure that we will be discussing is cost per unit, unit. that uh, because a uh, we looked in the previous chapter that why it is important to look at a cost of a one unit it helps you set the selling price it helps in planning it helps in control it helps in decision making and it have also helps in reporting the areas of the organization so first thing you need to identify cost per unit why you have made a budget that this should have been the cost of the product that we are making you compare it with the actual so there comes the next point that is comparison now when we are comparing when we are comparing the performance or when we are comparing the cost we can compare it either with the budget that we have made which is also known as forecast we can compare it with the previous year so let's say previous year my cost was 10 this year my cost is 11 it has increased what are the factors if it is inflation okay fine we cannot control inflation but if it is let's say wastage of raw material in the making of goods in the making of products then it should have been controlled isn't it the third one is competitor two competitors are there unilever png so when png would be making a product they would be comparing their cost with unilever so that they should make at least the same profit what the competitor is making isn't it so and then you can have a valid kind of comparison as well as let's say we have a seasonal business sweaters or let's say we have a seasonal business of we can say that or ice cream a seasonal business to some extent you can say that so let's say ice cream in which month would ice cream be sold more in summers or in or in winters summers, summers definitely so the sale of summer let's say june july and august would be more as compared to december january and february isn't it so if i'm comparing 2013 june with 2014 january is it a valid comparison no, no. no. in a seasonal business you always have to compare your sales or your cost or whatever comparison is there you have to make a valid comparison with the corresponding month if it is june 2013 so it has to be june 2000 compared with june 2012 right now do you understand what i'm trying to say by corresponding month that if it is june of this year so it has to be compared by the june of the previous year or the next year right everyone is clear now the next three ratios these are the ratios related to labor as we were discussing about payroll over here so definitely payroll is a cost center so we need to identify 
what are the purpose what are the different ratios or what are the different measures that we are having in order to identify the performance of a cost center so these are the three major ratios which are frequently used in order to assess the performance the first one is the production volume ratio then we have capacity ratio followed by efficiency ratio now i'll talk about efficiency ratio first efficiency ratio what do you think will it tell what do you think will it assess the efficiency of the employees okay employees. definitely it will tell you the efficiency of the employees that or efficiency of the labor that how efficiently they are working now let's say my labor is producing 100000 units so according to my budget one unit should have taken 2 hours so 100000 units will take 200000 hours but they are taking 200 and uh, 200000 and 100 so they are taking 100 hours more than the budgeted so if they are taking more number of hours than the budgeted will it be a good or will it be a better comparison no it will be a bad or will it be the, the will the labor be efficient can you consider it efficient no capacity ratio what does capacity ratio shows capacity ratio shows that how much the labor is having the capacity to work as the ratio is suggesting actual hours divided by the budgeted hours so it shows now let's say i have budgeted my labor should uh, my labor can work 40 hours a week in actual they are working 42 hours a week Do, are they having more capacity or less capacity more capacity the third one production volume ratio it tells you the Uh, that how much production how much production volume or the how much production can be done by a labor are they producing more or less that when if they are producing some goods so you might have budgeted that this month we have to make at least 100000 units or 500 units 1000 units 2000 units so there are definitely some budgets on which the company is running so you will always measure the performance by analyzing this ratio production volume ratio that whether your performance or whether your production is achieved in desired hours or not in desired hours now if you look over here in the formulas that i have given you budgeted hours is one thing standard hour is one thing there's no uh, there's no confusion in actual hours actual hours means the hours which is actually being worked no confusion there can any one of you tell me the difference between a standard hours and budgeted hours All right. Anyone else? Uh, the budgeted hours are expected hours that we do, and the standard hours are the hours that our people are actually working. All right. Anyone? Yeah. The standard is the uh, the minimum they can work. Okay. And the budget is the maximum that they can. Standard is the average. Okay. Okay, I'll explain it to you guys. Now I'll give you two figures. I'll give you two figures. I made a budget at the start of the year that my one unit should have taken, or my one unit should take two hours per unit. Okay, one unit should take two hours per unit, and my budgeted production is. Thousand units. So, what is my budgeted hours? Thousand into two. Two thousand. Two thousand hours. 
that is my budgeted hours so if i ask you what's the formula for budgeted hours so you might say you know if you want to calculate the form uh, budgeted hours so we can say it is budgeted units multiplied by budgeted hours per unit isn't it that we estimated that one unit would be taking 2 hours and our budgeted production or budgeted units were 1000 so my budgeted hours came out to be 2000 in actual i was producing 1100 units when my year end came when my year ended instead of having 1000 units i have actually produced 1100 units okay 100 units more now let's say i am measuring the efficiency okay i am measuring the efficiency of the labor before going into there tell me one thing can you compare a footballer to a cricketer no no definitely not can you compare a student studying in his 8th grade with a student studying in a 10th grade obviously not because the level is not the same so you can say that the option is not like with the like now when i will be measuring efficiency over here how many these actual hours how many for how many units are these actual hours for 1100 units if i compare them with the budgeted that is for how many units 1000 1000 so am i making a relevant comparison no because obviously if you compare number of hours of 1000 units with the number of hours of 1100 units definitely 1100 will be more because of the increase in number of units so standard hours is the standard hours if i explain you further says the standard time allowed for actual production so if i want to calculate standard hours the formula to calculate standard hour is this and i want you guys to copy these formulas because students usually form forget so whenever we are calculating the standard hours the formula is actual units multiplied by budgeted hours per unit so what you are basically calculating over here is that my budget for one unit was 2 hours per unit so if i am producing 1100 units it should have taken so whenever you use this word it should have taken it turns into an expectation so standard hours are the expected hours so you can say standard hours are the expected hours which you are expecting based on your actual production that if my actual production is 1100 i estimated that one unit would be taking 2 hours so based on my actual production how many hours it should have been taken known as the standard hours anyone having a confusion between standard hours and budgeted hours any confusion you have a confusion okay budgeted if you say budget is totally based on future exactly it's a plan budget is a plan so when you talk about budgeted hours the budget might have been or 
is exactly made at the start of the year when your year is being started so you make a plan for that that is known as budget right yeah but that is uh, not based on the actual data that's completely budgeted the data is completely planned what is your planned performance whereas a standard is based on your actual performance or actual production that if my actual production is this much units what number of hours it should have taken or to more simplify you can say budget is based on budgeted production the the only difference is because of the production the budget is based on budgeted production whereas a standard is based on actual production right so that's the difference between a budget and a standard so ex a standard tells you that what you should expect in order because of your actual results that my actual results or my actual production is 1100 units 1100 units so i should expect my labor to use 2200 hours but actually they have worked 2250 hours so that will be a relevant comparison uh, if uh, then instead of comparing it with the number of hours that is 2000 completely based on budget that's the major difference between a standard and a budget is everyone clear with that any confusion left or still okay now moving on further the next center that we need to analyze that we need to analyze the performance of is a profit center so it's the same thing it's not the cost per unit it's a profit per unit over here so that's profit per unit and the formula is exactly similar to what we have studied in uh, the cost per unit so total profit whatever you having you divided by units together to uh, have the data that what profit is being made by one unit what profit is being made by one single unit so you you can easily identify that my budget was that one unit should be making 20 dollars as a profit but it's actually making 25 so it's a better situation for you or on the other hand it's making 18 so that's a a adverse situation for you company and you can also compare your profit in a similar manner as we were comparing the cost with your budget with your previous year with your com uh, competitor with your corresponding month of the previous year so all of these are the relevant comparison is everyone fine with that okay now moving on further we have again three ratios again three ratios are there and these ratios the first one is known as the gross profit margin second one known as the net profit margin and the third one is the expenses to sales ratio now talking about the first one that is gross profit margin the formula says gross profit divided by sales multiplied by 100 so it tells you that if your sales is let's say $5000 dollars how much percentage is going to gross profit or how much percentage of your total sales is represented by gross profit so let's say if my sales is 100 and my gross profit is 40 so you will say that out of every 100 sale 40 is going to my gross profit so how much is the cost of sales 60 60 simple so simple it's a very simple formula very simple formula same is the case over here net profit so after deducting further expenses from gross profit you get what a net profit 
so similarly it will also be telling you that how much percentage of your net profit is being represented by the sales so let's say my out of every hundred 10 is my ultimate profit which is being left after deducting all of the further expenses so you can say that my uh, no def you cannot say that because uh, from sales you will deduct cost of sales which will result in gross profit and then further expenses will be deducted then you will be getting your net profit yeah no 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 all of the all of these figures gross profit will be a different percentage cost of sales will be a different percentage expenses will be a different percentage so let's say if we have over here let's say the sale is we have sales minus cost of sales is equals to gross profit minus further expenses which gives us net profit so you can say my sales is 100% minus cost of sales let's say 50 which gives you gross profit margin 50 from which you further deducted for expenses of 40 so your net profit is 10 percent getting my point so this is how you will be defining the gross profit margin and net profit margin or gross profit ratio or net profit ratio so they will be telling you how much percentage is being represented by net profit in your total sales and how much percentage is being represented by gross profit in your total sales same expenses same concept that how much percentage of your sales is going to cover the expenses now these expenses examiner can ask you a cumulative question which tells you to identify the total figure of expenses it can be admin expense selling expense distribution expense all three of them and then you calculate the ratio or the examiner can also ask you to only identify any particular expense so the examiner might say to you please tell me or calculate the admin expense to sale ratio so when the examiner will specify tell ex uh, admin expense to sale ratio so what we will take over here only admin expense but if examiner is not specifying anything he is only saying calculate expense to sale ratio so whatever expenses are there apart from cost of sales because cost of sale is not included over here cost of sales is already account for when we are calculating gross profit margin so whatever expenses you can find let's say depreciation expenses there let's say rent expenses there let's say admin expenses there distribution is there selling is there marketing is there advertising is there whatever expenses you have will just total them all divide by the total sales and you will get your ratio okay we'll do one question as well on each one of these after we are done with the theoretical part so you will have a better understanding how these ratios work investment center so basically investment center as we were discussing that investment center tells you how well the company is investing their funds we need to assess how well the company is investing their funds so we will be having ratios which are related to this concept so we have three major ratios that is return on capital employed residual income asset turnover three major ratios right so return on capital employed what is capital employed can anyone of you tell me okay that's one part of capital employed Look, when we talk about capital employed in the business, capital employed is the, the all the finances which are financing the business. The total of that will be known as the capital employed. Now that can be equity finance, that can be debt finance. 
So, we are not going into detail of that. Right? We are not going into detail of that. That what is an equity finance? What is a debt finance? Just to give you guys an overview, equity finance comes when you raise the finance for the company in terms of shares. You issue shares in the market, people buy shares and money flow into the company. That is one source of finance. The other source of finance is debt finance. Debt finance means you get a loan from a bank or any other financial institution on which you will be paying interest. So this, these two capital or these two sources of capital, sources of finance, we total them up. So that is known as your capital employed. So whatever capital employed. Now this formula return on capital employed profit before interest index divided by capital employed multiplied by 100. So this formula will tell you that on employing every one dollar into the business, what profit I am getting on every one dollar. Right? So it will be telling you on every one dollar what profit are you getting. So let's say if your uh, uh, return on capital employed is 40 percent. So you will say on every one dollar I will be getting 40 cents as a profit. So that's how we interpret return on capital employed. The second one is residual income. What is residual? Can anyone of you tell me the um, literal meaning of residual? Retained. Retained. Okay. No idea? Any one of you? What is meant by the term residual? Something left behind. Something left behind. Exactly. Something left behind. Remaining. So, residual income is a uh, measure which tells you exactly that how much amount because this will be giving you a figure which will be in amount which will be telling you how much is your residual income how much is the income in the hand of the owner that they can take back home now they are investing some money so after every year because when you get a profit from profit we deduct tax we deduct interest we deduct dividends all of those things after deducting each and everything how much is remaining in the hand of the owner that is called residual income residual means remaining income after deducting each and everything what is remaining in our hands that's called residual income so the formula is profit whatever the profit of the company is minus capital employed into interest rate which is known as the imputed interest notional interest so whatever capital you are bringing into the business on that you have to pay some cost let's say if you are getting a loan so you have to pay interest if you are getting uh, finance in terms of shares you have to pay dividend so whatever capital is being employed in the business on that you have to pay some imputed interest so whatever profit the company will be earning these people will be paid first and then whatever the remaining amount will be left will be known as residual income everyone's clear with that and the last one is the asset turnover now let's say I'll make you understand the formula in a very easy manner let's say the sales of one company is 150,000 and the sales of company B is 250,000 okay for company A it is 150,000 company B it is 250,000 both companies are having a capital of 100,000 both the companies are having same capital but one is making sales 150 the other one is making sales 250 which company is performing well company a or company b company b definitely company b because asset turnover shows you or tells you that how effectively you are using the asset which has been employed into the company so both the companies are giving the same assets same capital 
has been employed in both the companies. 100,000, 100,000. But which is making a better use of those 100,000 being invested in the business? A is making only 150. So their turnover is 1.5. B is making 250. So their turnover is 2.5. So they are making 2.5 dollars from every dollar one which is invested into the business and company A is making 1.5 dollar from every dollar one invested in the business so definitely the company which is making more money from the assets which have been invested in the company will be considered to be performing better everyone's fine with that okay so this is it for uh, today's chapter and uh, we've covered the chapter now let's take a break and then we will be continuing with the questions of this chapter okay now let's just move on to an example which consists of every single ratio that we have discussed so far and that example is recent results of a division are sale 500,000 Sale 500, uh, uh, 5 million, cost of sales 3 million, gross profit 2 million, and expenses 1.5 million, which gives you net profit 500,000. It has been budgeted to produce 100,000 units. So, budgeted figure is 100,000 units. And these should have taken 5 hours each. So, that is budgeted hours per unit. In fact, 120,000 units were produced in 580,000 hours. Capital employed for the division is 4 million and interest rate is 7%. So we need to calculate first of all cost per unit. So when we talk about cost per unit, we have two different costs over here, right? And that is That is cost of sales and expenses, right? Two different costs we have over here. That is cost of sales and expenses. So the total is 3 million and 1.5 million, right? Two different costs we have. 3 million and 1.5 million. The total is, so I'll just solve it over here. The first thing is, cost per unit so that will be 3 million plus 1.5 million divided by 100,000 or 120,000 120,000 so what is the cost per unit that we are getting dollar 37.5 per unit Okay, that is our first requirement. Now, the second thing they are asking us is efficiency ratio. So, what is the formula for efficiency ratio? Standard hours divided by actual hours. Do we have standard hours? No. No, we have to calculate them. And what is the formula for standard hours? Actual production multiplied by budgeted hours per unit so when we calculate efficiency ratio so that will be uh, actual production multiplied by budgeted hours per unit so that will give you standard hours divided by actual actual is no actual 580 multiply by 100 so what ratio are we getting 103.45 percent so if your ratio is above 100 what does that indicate your labor is more efficient or less efficient more efficient, more efficient definitely now the next is capacity ratio And the formula is actual hours divided by 
budgeted hours actual hours remain the same 580 divided by budgeted do we have budgeted hours yes, yes. and they those are 500,000 500, and how do we calculate it 5 per unit multiply by budgeted production that is 100,000 so that gives us 500,000 116 person so what does that indicate it indicates that our labor has more capacity than what we have budgeted the next one is production volume ratio What is the formula for production volume ratio? Standard divided by budgeted. Okay. So, what is the standard hours? 600. We have already calculated that 600 divided by budgeted that is 500 multiply by 100. So, what are we getting? 120. So, it means that we have produced more than what we budgeted at the start of the year. Is everyone fine with that? Any confusion up till here? Great. Now, the next thing that we need to calculate is gross profit percentage. What is the gross profit we are having in the question? 2 million and the sale is? 5 million. So, it is easy for us to calculate the gross profit percentage and that is gross profit margin is equals to 2 million divide by 5 million multiply by 100. That will be 40 percent. It means out of your total sales gross profit represents 40 percent the next is net profit margin how much is the net profit 500,000 divided by 5 million multiply by 100 so that is 10 percent Okay, same, same technique that 10% uh, of your total sales is your net profit margin. The next thing we have expenses to sales ratio. How much are the expenses? Uh, 1.5 1. 1. million divided by sales 5 million multiply by 100 how much is the ratio 30 percent it means 30 percent of your sales is going to cover the expenses okay these are the three ratio which what center are these three ratios related to no centers we discussed three centers that is related to profit center okay now the next one is return on capital employed return on capital employed what's the formula it's profit divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 so what's the profit 500,000 divided by capital employed that is 4 million multiply by 100 so that gives you figure of 12.5 percent profit divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 gives you 12.5 percent so it, it says that on every dollar one invested you are earning 0.125 dollar or 12.5 cents okay the last one is residual income the formula for residual income is profit minus capital employed into imputed interest. Okay, so profit is 500,000 
ओके माइनस कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड इनटू इंटरेस्ट रेट सो व्हाट आर वी गेटिंग ओवर हियर 280 माइनस 500 गिव्स यू 220,000 सो दिस सो दैट इज योर दैट इज your residual income or the remaining income okay any problem up till here no. okay now that's it from the example now we will be moving on towards the question of your revision kit so take out your questions that i have given to you and start solving those questions okay now moving on towards the first question which says that which is the best description of responsibility accounting d, d. everyone has done d yes. everyone has done d yes okay d is the correct answer which says that managers be a responsibility for the revenue and the cost in their area of business okay a manager has a responsibility for the both cost incurred and revenue earned by his area of business this means the manager is responsible for which of the following profit center yes. everyone has done profit center yes. okay great now the next thing the next question we have a manager in a division has his performance measured on the basis of the amount of the profit the division marks in relation to the capital employed in the division which of the following is the manager responsible for <laughs> everyone has done investment center yes that's the correct answer investment center is the correct answer okay 4.4 in may a manufacturing company manufactured 150 200 units of a single product in june it uh, 183300 units were produced and in july 190400 units were produced the manufacturing cost incurred in may were 51000 june were 67821 and in july it was 74321 what was the increase in the cost per unit from may to june how many of you were able to do this question no okay now i'll solve this question for you guys over here what two months the examiner is asking for may and, may and may. june so first of all calculate cost per unit for may for may the cost per unit is 51668 that is 51000 And sixty-eight, hundred and fifty thousand and two hundred. So that is point three four. What about June? In June, they are saying the cost per unit is sixty-seven eight two one. Divided by one eighty three three hundred, and what are we having cost per unit? Zero point three seven. So, in June, what is the cost? Point three seven, and in May the cost is point three four. So, how much is the difference between these two? Zero point zero. Three or you can say three cents. three cents. Is everyone fine with that? Okay. If sales are twenty five thousand five hundred, cost of sales are twenty one thousand two fifty. What is the gross profit percentage? Sixteen point six seven. Everybody is able to identify sixteen point six seven. Any confusion? Okay. I'll just do this one as well on the board so that if anyone has not done it, so that they can copy down the solution. So the formula for gross profit percentage is gross profit divided by sales. How do we calculate gross profit? Sales minus cost of sales. Cost of sales. So sales over here is 
25,500 and the sales cost of sales are 250. So, that is our gross profit. How much is it? 4250. 4? 250. So, now what we will do in order to calculate the gross profit percentage or margin 4250 divided by 25,500 that is sales multiplied by 100. And what are we getting? 16.67 percent that is your correct answer. Okay. Now, move on to the next question. A business operates a gross profit percentage of 33 percent. Gross profit is 800. Expense is 680. What is the net profit percentage? 5 percent. Okay. Everyone was able to do that. No? How many of you are having problem in this question? Okay, I will solve this one. Very easy question. What is your gross profit? 33.33. It means that sales minus cost of sales gives you gross profit. So, gross profit is 33.33. Sales is 100. So, cost of sales will be 66.67 percent. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm doing. That's that's what I'm doing. Now, gross profit is representing how much percentage? 33.33 percent. So. What figure do we have of gross profit over here? 800. What percentage is it representing? So, whatever percentage is being represented by any of the amount, you divide that amount by its percentage. Okay? The rule is whatever percentage is being represented by any of the amount, you divide that amount by its percentage. Now, what do we want to find out? Sales. So, what is the percentage of sales? 100. So, we will multiply it by 100 percent. What are we getting sales? 2400. Now, we have sales that is 2400. So, we can easily find out net profit because net profit is gross profit minus further expenses. 120. So, the net profit percentage will be 120 divided by 2400 multiplied by 100. So, that will be giving you 5 percent. Okay. Everyone is fine with that? Great. A business has a credit sales of 150,000 and a cash sales of 50,000. Production cost, what is the other name for production cost? Cost of sales. Okay. With the selling cost 35,000 and admin cost 25,000. What is the gross profit margin? So, you guys know the formula to calculate gross profit margin. We have already discussed in the previous question as well. So, what is the total sales? 200 and that is 150 plus 50. Okay. Minus what? 120 because that is cost of sales divided by 150 plus 50 multiply by 100. So, that is 40 percent. Okay. Now, the next is same data, but you have to find out operating profit margin or the other word you can say net profit margin. So, that will be 
150,000 plus 50,000 minus cost of sales minus further expenses. What are the further expenses? 35,000 35, selling cost. and minus admin cost 25,000 okay divided by sales multiply by 100 what are we getting 10 percent as the net profit margin okay now you are given the following information about a business gross profit is 30 percent the gross profit amount is 240,000 operating expenses 106 what is the operating profit margin how many of you have done this one so that is the correct figure 16.75 how we will be doing that we have already done this kind of question before right so first of all we have to calculate sales what is the gross profit given in the question 240 what percentage does it represent 30 percent and what percentage we have to find out 100 percent that is your sales so what sales figure are we getting 800 thousand so his sales is 800 thousand now what are the operating expenses 106 so gross profit 240 minus 106 your net profit will be 134. so that will be 134 divided by your sales that is 800,000 multiplied by 100. So, what are we getting as net profit? 16.75 percent. Okay, any confusion up till here? No. Is everything fine? That whenever you, the data is given to you in this form, you just divide the amount with its percentage. So, we were given gross profit 250,000 and gross profit percentage 30 percent. So, 240 were representing 30 percent, uh, we multiplied by 100 percent because sales is 100 percent. Great. A manufacturer makes three different products X, Y, Z. The standard time allowed for each product is 1 hour for X, 1.5 for Y and 1.75 for Z. During April, the following units were produced 800 units of Y. 1400 units of Z, 2000 units of X. What are the standard hours of output for April? 5650. Five, so, units are given and per unit hours are given. You will simply multiply each one of them and add them. The correct answer will be D5650 standard hours. What are the three main labor ratios? A, A efficiency ratio, capacity capacity utilization ratio and production volume ratio during quarter two a manufacturing business had budgeted for 12,000 labor hours so these are your budgeted the actual hours were 11,400 and standard hours were 10,800 what is the efficiency ratio what is the formula for efficiency standard, standard divided by actual so, standard divided by actual. So, standard hours are 10,800 and actual hours are 11,400 multiplied by 100. So, 94.7 percentage. Okay. The next one given for two questions the data is given for two question the same data i think it's yeah, same, data, same, same data. data so what is the labor capacity ratio 
so that is actual which is 11400 divide by budget at 12000 multiply by 100 90 95 percent, and then we have the third one, production volume ratio. That is standard divided by budgeted. So standard is 10,800 divided by 12,000 multiplied by 100. 90 percent. Okay. Any confusion in these formulas? Everyone is fine. Great. Which of the following is the best description of residual income? D, C, C, D. How many of you are saying C? D. And how many of you are saying D? D? The correct answer is C. C. That is profit before tax less notional interest. So I was explaining to you guys that it is a notional interest on all of your capital employed. not only and there is no such uh, we can we have never discussed about depreciation over here it's not discussed in the residual income because we assume that when we are calculating the profit depreciation is already adjusted over there okay so moving on to the next question that is an investment center has a non current asset with a value of 300000 net current asset totaling 40000 and it made a profit before tax of 40000 and the tax charge for the year was 10000 what is the return on investment for the investment center for the year so the formula for return on investment is capital employed oh sorry profit divided by capital employed so what is the profit we are having Profit is forty thousand. Will we deduct tax from that? No. No. We take the profit before tax. Okay. What is the capital employed? Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand for non-current asset plus forty thousand for net current asset. Multiply by hundred. What are we getting as return on capital employed? Eleven point eight percent. Okay. Now, for which of the following would a information system use cost center rather than revenue center in order to provide useful information? A manager of a shop in a retail chain. If it is a shop, definitely there will be sales. There will be cost. So that will be a profit center. one of the three departmental manager of a training a trading company that will be a again either a profit center or a revenue center personal manager of a manufacturing company personal means hr manager hr manager are they selling anything no no they are only hiring people and in hiring the cost is being incurred only cost is relevant for them so that will be a cost center so the correct answer will be c the personal manager or the hr manager of a manufacturing company okay so this is it from today's chapter and we have done the questions as well so i want you guys to revise all of these question properly and come in the next class after revising each and everything okay thank you